Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I've noticed there's a lot of rural activity recently. It's that time of year when farmers are out in the fields till all hours, harvesting the crops and making hay while the weather is in their favour. Trucks rumble through the streets with bales of hay piled high upon them and trying to get anywhere by car through the dales at the moment means constantly being stuck behind a tractor. Well, paintings can be topical of their time and environment and the harvesting reminded me of a demonstration from a few years ago which I'd like to present to you now slightly remastered and updated. Let's make hay. In this demonstration, I'll be painting a modern day haymaking scene. Hopefully, the scene will capture those busy and sometimes fraught moments when a farmer has to collect the harvest, anxiously watching the weather and literally making hay while the sun shines. After drawing the scene out using a light, weak, burnt umber, I'm going to start by painting the sky using Prussian blue. I'm creating cloud shapes by negatively painting around them. Clouds should obey the laws of perspective. Those that are nearer will appear larger and bulkier than those that are further away. Distant clouds will look smaller, more tightly packed together and more horizontal in appearance. To give them shape, I'm applying a grey to their undersides, mixed from French ultramarine and burnt umber. Softening them off with a damp brush prevents them from looking too hard-edged and cartoon-like. I'm now mixing together some cadmium yellow and burnt umber to create a sunny golden colour. Since it's harvest time, I'm trying to avoid using any bright, summery greens. We have to believe that the summer is coming to an end and the hay is nice and dry and ready to be harvested. I'm applying the colour to the whole of the field area. All I need to do is take a little bit of care when painting around the farm equipment. Well, the combine harvester itself is also a sandy yellow colour so I'm painting it with a slightly richer version of the same mix. And my shadows are a light mix of French ultramarine. It's always better to paint your object in the brighter colour first like this, then overlay your shadows, than to mix the shadow area separately. You get more convincing shadows that way. Providing you don't mix the French ultramarine too heavily, it'll allow the lighter colour to show through from underneath. Care has to be taken, of course. By putting shadows in, you're saying where the light is coming from, so you have to be consistent and monitor things to avoid making any horrendous mistakes, or at least correct them before someone else spots them first. The background trees are mixed from French ultramarine and cadmium yellow. It's important at this stage to start introducing some contrast to the scene. In particular, I'm interested in creating a contrast between the dark trees and the lighter tones of the combine harvester. The shape of the harvester is actually defined by the darker tone. Remember, tone is relative. The lighter we want the combine harvester to appear, the darker the background trees need to be. I'm using a light mix of burnt umber and cadmium yellow to suggest furrows in the field. 
by gently curving them in this way, they help to explain the contours of the land. Without them, the fields would just appear flat and two-dimensional. It's time to start applying some of the darkest tones. For these, I've mixed French ultramarine and burnt umber together into a nice, rich mix. I'm no expert on combine harvesters, so I don't necessarily understand what things do or how they're connected. This shouldn't matter, however. I'm creating the impression of grills and panels and then softening off selected brush marks with a damp brush. For any farmers who happen to be watching, I apologise. I'm sure my harvester lacks the necessary cogs and wheels that make it a viable piece of farming equipment. But I'm happily convinced that near enough is good enough on this occasion. We often have to engineer tones within a composition to make it work. Never be afraid to alter things slightly if you think it's going to improve it. OK, so sometimes it's a gamble, but getting your tones right is going to make or break your painting far more than the colours you use. It's time to reach for the Woolies Wonderbrush. That'll be the essential correction and special effects tool designed specially for watercolour artists then. Alternatively, any stiff bristled brush will do. I want to bring extra life and movement to the scene by adding clouds of dust and stuff kicked up by the combine harvester. I dampen the wonder brush and scrub the area lightly in a circular motion, then immediately dab it dry with a piece of tissue. For the dust, I've used the brush quite liberally and freehand and I now want to lift out the hay that's shooting out from the top of the long arm thingy. So to do this I'm using two pieces of thin cardboard as a mask. This protects the surrounding area and allows me to create a more solid looking highlight. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of a haymaking scene and that it's inspired you to want to paint something similar for yourself. As artists, we should aim to capture what's going on around us, paint what we see. That's what the masters did and their work serves as a historical record of their day. Until next time, take care.